Okay, uh, welcome back to Video Notes. Uh, we're going to do distance, displacement, and uh, talk about the second lab that we're going to do in class. Um, don't forget that while you're doing this, that you need to uh, take notes as best as you can, uh, pause and rewind as much as you need, and uh, be sure to answer all of Fritz's questions because those are the parts that I'm going to grade, right? Uh, so let's go start with talking about distance. If you look at the following picture, how might you measure the distance that a person has traveled? Uh, well, most people would just say, okay, well, path A, uh, we go one, two, three, four blocks. That's easy, right? Uh, when we talk about distance, just like an app on your phone would track your distance that you walk in a day, it just tells you how long that is. What is that length? How much ground did you cover? physically, right? Um, because there's no direction associated with it, we call that a scalar quantity, just like speed is. It's just a number. There's no direction. Okay. Um, one of the phrases that we use a lot with distance is that it is path dependent or dependent on path. So the idea here is that uh, path A and path B both start and finish. Oops, sorry. Uh, both start and finish at the same spots, okay? But which one is longer? Obviously, path B, the red line, is a lot longer than path A is. In fact, if you took the time to count it out, it's about 10 blocks. Uh, that's six more blocks than path A is, but you still got to the same spot, right? Uh, they just took a longer way to get there, and that's why distance is important. There's a question from Fritz. Uh, just what is the distance of path D? So take a moment to figure that out. Uh, displacement, instead of being a scalar quantity, is just like velocity and the idea that it's a vector quantity. It's got both a number and a direction. So if I were talking about the displacement of path A or path B, since they both start and finish at the same spot, it's literally just the distance or the length from point A to point B, just a straight line distance. Or as your grandma might say, as the crow flies, right? That'd be the length of that pink line there. Uh, and you'd also have to say that it's to the northeast, right? Because uh, you have to have a number and a direction. Now A and B have about the same displacements, but they have totally different distances, if you remember that. Okay. Uh, Fritz asked you here to calculate distance and displacement for path C. And that one shouldn't be too hard. Uh, on occasion, if you want to calculate the displacement, you might have to do uh, Pythagorean theorem. So if we were looking at the displacement of D from there to over here, that wasn't a very good line. There you go. Um, you'd have to do three sides here and take the length of A and B to find out C and do our good friend, the Pythagorean theorem, and figure out that length of that hypotenuse there. And that would be the displacement if you throw the direction in there also. But if we think about it, uh, if we started, say, right here in this corner, and we went north a block, west a block, south a block, and east a block, we ended up right back in that same corner. What is our displacement then? Our distance is four blocks, but if we tried to take a distance between the same two points, uh, point A and point A, and then that's just zero, right? So at that point, our displacement is zero. There's no direction because you can't really have a direction with a zero number. Uh, and there's the last question from Fritz about distance and displacement. It's just what is the difference between the two, or what are they? Which one is scalar? Which one is vector? Okay. Now let's talk about your lab real quick. Um, I'm not going to be there on Monday. Uh, well, I am, but only for about 10 minutes, and I have to go to a training session. I'm really sad that I'm not going to be there. I really want to be there so I can answer your questions, but it's something i got to do. Uh, so... Lucky for you, I made your lab pretty easy this time. Uh, there's only three pre-lab questions, and I want you to get those done on Monday on your own. They should be super easy. 
you got this. I have faith in you. All right. Uh, and I also, after you finish your pre-lab uh, questions, I want you to read the whole lab to get ready for Tuesday. Make sure you know what's going on. Because my goal for Tuesday is that you walk in, I check off your pre-lab, you get your materials, you get to work. All right. I want you to finish collecting data by Tuesday and be able to answer the post-lab questions before you leave. Or, or do the post-lab on Wednesday, depending on how the time goes. Um, Material-wise, you'll need a tennis ball, ping pong ball, meter stick. I want you to do all the work on your iPad. Uh, since Google Classroom has got that new fancy update, uh, there's no sense in wasting paper when you can do it super easy on your iPad. Uh, and then a stopwatch, or you can use the, the clock app on your iPad or your phone or something. Uh, since you're doing this work on your iPad, uh, I went ahead and made these fancy tables for you. Okay, uh, So you can collect your data and write it right in there. You're welcome. Um, what are you going to do? You're going to measure. Uh, you're going to go against a wall and measure up one and a half, two, and two and a half meters, and put a piece of tape at each of those spots. And you're going to drop a ball from those spots, okay? And then time how long it takes for that ball to hit the ground. You're going to do that four times for each distance, so twelve times total. And you're going to do it again for the ping pong ball. So 24 times total. That's the answer to your question here. Uh, Fritz is just asking, how many times are you going to have to measure how long it takes for a ball to fall? Uh, I want you to collect your data. And once you're done collecting data, I want you to start analyzing the data a little bit. So you need to calculate your averages for each column. That'll be six averages total, right? Three for each ball. And then also do a percent error for each column, but just for trial one, okay? Don't do it for each of the trials, just do a percent error for trial percent error for trial one. Use your average as the theoretical and use trial one as your experimental, okay? Uh, there's Fritz's question. What's the equation for percent error? You should know that by now, it should be ingrained in your head. Uh, I've also provided you with this fancy little graph here, uh, but here's the catch. You have to label the graph, title, axis titles, and I even put a little box for you to put the uh, units in. Don't forget that part, okay? That's very important. You also need to put numbers along the side. It got you hash marks there, so all you got to do is put the numbers. Uh, but you should have three points for your ping pong ball and three points for your tennis ball. Uh, however those line up, I want you to do those in two different colors, though, okay? So you can tell uh, which data set is which. Um, for your post-lab questions, there aren't really any questions throughout the lab except for collecting the data and analyzing it. But for the post-lab, there are only five questions, and I want all of that turned into me uh, probably halfway through the period on Wednesday, okay? Now, don't forget that your the questions from the notes uh, – from these sets of notes are due Monday. Uh, your pre-lab then is due Tuesday when you walk in, so I can check off and you start your lab. And on Wednesday we'll do, or Tuesday we'll do the lab, uh, and then your post-lab questions and all the lab data stuff is due uh, midway through the class on Wednesday. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope that you got something out of it. Uh, be sure to give me some feedback uh, next time I see you. Uh, have a good night.